What's up guys? This is Matt and this is Hidden Light and no old news today. I'm renting out the studio that I usually shoot that in to someone else for like two weeks so I don't have access to my studio today so we're gonna make prints instead. So last week if you were watching, hopefully you were, uh, we went down to Oak Creek Canyon and shot the 8x10 and I shot what eight sheets of film and I have my top four picks here and they turned out really good I wasn't sure because I listened to the meter and I'm not always a believer in meter readings but worked out great so I've got four reasonably well exposed 8x10 negatives we're gonna make four platinum palladium 8x10 prints from super simple but we're gonna kind of walk through the process today in a little more in depth, a little more workshop style maybe than we usually do when I'm just like slamming through prints and you get to see the B-roll and it's real pretty. This is gonna be a little bit more in depth. So uh, we'll start, I'll put on my apron, we'll get the chemistry dialed in and uh, make sure our paper's ready and we'll be able to make some prints. Let's do it. Grab these negatives and we can go start playing a little. Be fun. Which one do we start with? <gasps> this one. Warm up the bulbs. Set a timer for five minutes. Maybe. Okay, good. So while that warms up, let's talk about chemistry. Uh, I've got this is the highest contrast negative. Of course, you can't tell. Um, so I'm going to start with a pretty punchy chemistry mix. We're going to be using the NA2 method today. Um, so what I'm going to be doing for 8x10s to make sure I get a good coat is 10 drops of ferric oxalate, 10 drops of palladium, and then 2 drops of NA2. If I find that that's too contrasty, I can back out the NA2 and go pure palladium if I need to. And We'll probably start with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in this mix as well. I found that a lot of these negatives, straight out of camera, straight from like analog negatives, like a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in the mix, typically one drop per 10 drops of um, palladium generally is kind of how I like to do that. And it'd give me a nice big snap. What it does is it kind of holds back those highlights a little bit, gives you a little bit better contrast. So we'll start high contrast, and if we need to, we'll work our way back. Yeah, might as well make up some chemistry, I guess. What did I say? Ten. Ten drops. Ferric oxalate number one. A2, also known as sodium platinum. Ten drops, palladium number three. One, two, three. Go with eleven, just like the other one. That purple backlight looks cool. For those of you who don't know, I'm a big fan of brush coating. So I don't like to use glass rods, and that's mostly for two reasons. One, because I make a lot of different sized prints and it's a real pain in the ass to have 30 different glass rods for the different sized prints that I make. Um, and two, because I feel like I can get it to soak into the paper a little better with the brush. So what you do is you get it all nice and wet, which this one already is, and then you kind of squeegee out some of the moisture and uh, flick it at your videographer. And uh, just get, you want it moist enough that it's not absorbing all of your chemistry but not so wet that it leaves like white streaks everywhere from the water you're using to moisten it. So um, I do use brushes with a metal ferrule. I haven't found that to be a problem because I'm not scraping the brush against the paper like some people do. Um, you keep the brush mostly kind of upright as you work it and that takes care of that. So it doesn't matter about the, the metal part of the brush. So once this table's done warming up, in 10 seconds, this is it's like I planned this, we'll turn off the bulbs and coat our first sheet. So today we're using Arsh 
platine, which is spelled arches, but it's French, so omit letters. Um, it has a smooth side and a not so smooth side. Where to print on the smooth side. And then with this little chemistry, I'll typically just dump it right in the middle and then immediately move it around. So one, two, <gasps> run away! Brush mostly upright. It's worth mentioning that this room is nice and humid and this paper lives in this room full time. So we're at whatever, probably 40 something percent humidity. And that makes a huge difference in platinum palladium. So while the coat dries, I need to look up my notes for exposure. So I keep those in a spreadsheet. I've gotten to the point where I can almost feel the exposure based on how well I can see through the negative to the coated paper underneath. But it's always good to keep notes. So I've made myself a little spreadsheet and I just track my notes as I go through. Might as well. Okay, so I could use uh, this, which is the top of this table, to hold everything flat. But it's a little aggressive and it makes my life difficult. So I'm going to use instead it's a contact frame. This is 11 by 14 contact frame. It's got these little guys, and their job is to hold the back flush to the face, and more importantly, it lets me check my exposure by only opening half the back. So what I can do is I'll have my, and you'll, we'll, we'll do this so you can see. But I'll, be able to, rude. But I'll be able to lift up the paper while it's still in good registration with the negative, check, that I haven't totally screwed the pooch on my exposure. If I need to continue adding exposure, just put it back down. And if you're done, take off the other half. So, our coat has dried. So we're ready. This is how I've been trying to figure out my exposures, right? You want to be able to look at a negative and at least get a feeling. So I can see through some parts of it, but definitely not other parts of it. So what I think, based on this, is I'm gonna be in the five-ish minute range. So that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with an exposure at five minutes and we'll just see what happens. It could be less than that. Could be four minutes. We'll start with four minutes. Four minutes. Start. Woo! Damn. Don't look at that. It's not good for you. Three, two, one. Let's just see about this. So here's the split back thing. Um, I can see that I'm starting to get a little bit of printout around the edges, which means I'm making an exposure. So that's good. But if I want to check, if I'm getting through the negative, you just kinda, without tweaking it too much, peel this bad boy up and see if you're getting through at all to the paper underneath. I've got some here that I can see is good detail. Not too much though. I might let this go another minute. glasses. Not too bad. Check again. God, that crap's bad for your eyes. There's a little more. Not a lot, just a little. So now uh, we'll go set up some trays and develop it and then do some clearing bath. It'll be great. So I've got one beautiful bone dry tray that my print will go in with developer. And then we've got a couple of clearing baths set up over here that we'll kind of rotate through as we need to. And then a wash. So the first thing we'll do is develop the first print. See if I guessed right at four minutes. And if I did, then we'll just continue on living our lives. If I guessed wrong, we'll clear it just enough 
and then reevaluate and see uh, what's happening. So I uh, will go fetch that print, get going. Nice. Maybe. I'm going to go with maybe. Um, some good printout in the deep shadows, which is about where I want it. So let's just see. Ready? I'll face this to you guys so you can see what's going on. One, two. <clears throat> hey, that's not terrible. All right, using my skin colored gloves. Just transfer, give it a little rinsey poo. That looks pretty freaking good. I feel great about that. We'll have to see how this dries. When it dries and the blacks come up, they get less apparently dark. Might be more interesting. So uh, I'm happy with that. This is gonna be my sort of AP of this image. I'll do, I'll finish the addition later because I feel really good about where that's going. And now we'll start the next image that we're working on today, new negative. So uh, I'll just let that mellow in its clearing bath and we'll continue living our lives. <laughs> okay, this one's gonna be tough. We'll see. We'll just see about this. This one like doesn't want to stay flat either. Like something happened to this. No, same paper. I'm just an idiot. Same mix again. I'm basically I'm going to use this mix until I figure out that it's too high contrast, and then I'll start backing it down. So 10, 10, 2, 1. One, two, and one H2O2. Never drink anything out of a shot glass. It's about the same color as espresso. Might be good. Bad. One, two, one, go. Okay, so good learning opportunity. Uh, I'm pretty sure this print is gonna look like shit. It's gonna look terrible. If you look in here, it's hard to tell in this light maybe. Bottom section, I have this beautiful, clean, mostly even coat. And up here, I have this terrible, crunchy badness. It's like a, an uneven, grainy texture, which is because something happened to this piece of paper at some point in its life. We're gonna do it anyway. I do not expect this to turn out. You can kind of see what's going on a little bit better. So I'm gonna start three minutes for this bad boy. Okay, so that was three minutes. Good printout on the edges, so I know I'm in the right place. Whoa. Let's check the other side. Let's try it. Living on the edge. Like I kind of like some of what's going on in here, but it's not, these are way too bright. And I can't, you know, dodge and burn it using the light source that I'm currently using. Maybe we'll move on to the next one. Image number three, rinse and repeat, new negative. Do it again, 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 again. This is gonna be a lot better. Uh, much more even looking coat, no weird textural shenanigans. 
I'm into it. Pick a negative, any negative. Pick this one. So this is going to be a lot better. Uh, in so many ways. But like, you can't quite see through it the same. So we're in the five plus minute range for this bad boy. So we're going to start at five and see where we end up. Could be seven. Start at five. So that was five minutes. Uh huh. Let's just see. Let's just see. I'm gonna go a little more. I'm gonna give it two more. Worst case scenario, we go too far. Of course, two minutes isn't one of the options. Ready, go. I said, ready, go. Wah. It's gonna be close. I think it goes like this. We're gonna find that together. Oh, I don't know, that's pretty good. Might have been just a little too far. I would have liked a little bit more highlight. So we may do another one of these at five. Just for grins. Problem is, if I let this go lighter, this whole area is gonna just get a little extreme. Maybe we'll do the next one because it's got way less of that opposite bank. We'll do that, it's a great idea. Next one. Last one for now, for last negative. Last proof, last starting point, last something. This is essentially the same scene as the other one, uh, but it's got a lot less of the background going on and a lot more foreground water. seconds because I missed it. Okay. Sometimes you gotta feel the exposure. That's better. Oh yeah. That's the best one yet. This one and the first one. But those are the ones I'm going to continue printing, and the rest I'm going to leave alone. Just let them go for 45 minutes or so. Get all the clearing bath out of them. One hour later. Okay, so we finished the prints. We put them in the wash. I went out and got lunch. It's been like an hour and a bit now, so we'll pull the prints out of the wash, lay them out, dry them down, see what we see. So one thing you don't want to do is judge a wet print. So I need to dry all of these down to see how they're really going to look because they look pretty punchy right now and as they dry, they'll dry lower contrast. So I'm going to go find some drying stuff and we'll dry this stuff. finished. Made four prints from four negatives. Uh, I think some of these are worth continuing to pursue, probably in a very similar way that I've done them already. Uh, this guy's my standout favorite. I could go a little lighter maybe and still retain some highlight detail and catch a little bit more of what's going on here. 
This guy is the second favorite. I'm looking forward to see a scan of this actually. That'll be really interesting. This guy is pretty okay. I don't love the composition with all this. And this I think was mostly a failed experiment. It, it's nice and sharp here, uh, but the moving water does this out of focus thing and it, I don't know, it looks kind of terrible. So that's it. Just uh, a lovely morning's worth of work. And we'll do an in-depth what we're printing video soonish and talk about these and talk about the other stuff I've been printing and we'll see what you've been printing. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining us. Join Thanks for joining us, me, on this strange not an old news segment day and uh, hanging out in the lab. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them in the comment place where comments go. And if you haven't, you could consider maybe subscribing? I mean, I hate to be that guy to ask, but I don't know. Think about it. See ya.